So let's say the contract is over, and now we must deliver. We're the short position. Well, what to do, what to do. We have all of these bonds, bond one, bond two, all the way down to bond end. We can choose any one of these to deliver. They all qualify. Uh, but wh which one are we going to choose? We have to have a mechanism for selecting which one we're going to choose, and it turns out that we do. And because we have a mechanism for selecting which one we're going to choose, the one who receives also pretty much knows what they're going to get. So we're looking to find basically CTD, our cheapest to deliver. Of all these bonds, which one is the cheapest to deliver? Now, a naive thinker might say, well, just find the one with the lowest price, deliver that one. Well, careful now, that might not be, uh, be the right thing, right? Because there's a conversion factor. So, what do we receive when we deliver? We're going to receive the most recent settlement price on the Treasury Futures contract, because that's what we were engaged with to begin with. We're going to receive that price times the conversion factor. Each one of these bonds has their specific conversion factor. We've already seen how to figure that out. Times the conversion factor plus, we're also going to get any accrued interest owed to us from the last bond payment, for, sorry, from the last coupon payment. That's what we get. What do we have to put out? Uh, well, we have to get one of these bonds to deliver. So we're going to pay the quoted price plus any accrued interest. Notice that the quoted price plus accrued interest, that is our cash price, right? We always pay the cash price. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to minimize our cost as cheap as to deliver. So the difference between what we pay and what we get, we want to minimize. So what we get, or sorry, what we pay is the cash price, the quoted price plus accrued interest. What we get is the settlement price on the futures contract times the conversion factor for the bond that we're delivering plus any accrued interest. When we, when we sell it, when we deliver, we get the accrued interest back. Notice that when we buy it, we must pay the accrued interest, but we get it back. We can ignore that. That's a wash. We can just ignore that. So it simplifies to we will pay the quoted price, which is an observable, nice and, nice and easy to observe, no calculation of accrued interest because we're going to get it back, minus the settlement price on the Treasury futures contract, which is an observable price, uh, times a conversion factor, which is published by the uh, by the Chicago Board of, uh, of uh, or Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So um, Chicago Board of Trade, sorry. So that's already published. So which one is the cheapest to deliver? Well, we're going to assume a settlement price on the on the T-bill contract of 9308, which is 93 and 8 over 32, or 93 and a quarter. And we have these three bonds to choose from, and here's our conversion factor. Now, as we're looking, we would say, well, number one looks to be the cheapest bond. Number two is the most expensive bond. So I'm going to deliver number one if we don't understand what a conversion factor is, right? So let's, uh, let's work it out and see what we get. On the first bond, we have our... 99.50, which is our quoted price here, minus our settlement price, which is 93.25 times the conversion factor, 1.0382. So what we're saying here is that whatever the T-bond futures contract ended at, we would need 1.0382 of those to equal one of these. So once we multiply that out, we will find that it costs us $2.69 per hundred dollars to deliver this bond under this futures contract. For the next one we have 143.50 minus the settlement price, but look what happens here. We would need 1.5188 of these. So we multiply this by 1.5188, take it off the 143.50, we get a dollar 87 per hundred dollars of par value. Suddenly it becomes cheaper. The cheapest one is 269, the most expensive uh, one on a quoted price is 187 to deliver. There's a difference between the price you pay and the delivery because you're going to get money back when you when you deliver it, right? Finally, 11975 minus 9325 times its conversion factor, 2615, will give us 212. So we can see, counterintuitively in fact, that this is actually the cheapest to deliver because we're going to put out money, but because of the conversion factor, we're going to get back most of that money. There we go. Now, I want to make an important note here in case you're 
uh, wondering uh, cheapest to deliver. Is there a, an instance where, well, hang on a second, is there an instance where I can actually make money? It looks like it's costing me money to deliver each time. Is there any situation under which I can buy a bond and, and deliver it and actually get more money? In other words, can this be negative? Can the cost to deliver be negative? Well, let's take this as x. Let's take this whole thing as y. And x always, always must be greater than y. x must always be greater than y. Or else, there is an arbitrage opportunity. There's an arb opportunity. So the price will always be greater. Otherwise, you can enter into a riskless trade. You can take, take the, the, uh, the deliverable, and you can deliver it and actually get more. So by arbitraging that away, it would drive the price of the bond up such that that would disappear. How much higher? Well, there's no arbitrage opportunity on the other side to force it down, but to at least force it up. Remember, we come to our futures prices throughout the, the, the book as we've been developing the, the formula for futures price by showing how an arbitrage opportunity can arise on either side so that a futures price would have to be some function of the spot price, the time to maturity, and the interest rate. Otherwise, an arbitrage opportunity opens up. So the no arbitrage price is the price we expect to see. So X must always be greater than Y because that's a no arbitrage uh, um, um, situation be in the relationship between the cheapest to deliver versus the um, closing price or the settlement price on the T-bond futures contract. So there we go. There is a, sort of a probably more than you want to know about cheapest to deliver. And as a final note on the cheapest to deliver, let's look at some uh, relationships uh, that exist. Uh, since the standard bond assumes a 6% coupon, this is the, the standard deliverable bond in the uh, T-bond futures contract. The underlying assumes a standard $100,000 6% government bond. If, there, if, if you're going to deliver a bond with a higher coupon, the conversion factor will be greater than 1. It'll be 1 point something. You'll need 1 point something standard bonds to equal one of these higher coupon bonds. So the conversion factor will be greater than 1. If, on the other hand, it has, you're delivering a bond with a lower coupon than the standard bond, than the 6%, the conversion factor will be less than 1. It'll be point, point x standard bonds to equal 1. So, so far we've seen examples where the conversion factors have all been greater than 1 because the coupons on the deliverable bond, bonds that we've been using as examples were all higher than 6%. If we had a lower coupon bond, then the conversion factor would be less than 1. You'd need fewer standard bonds to equal uh, uh, one of these because the standard bond is suddenly the better paying bond. So market, if the market rate, let's move away just from the coupon bond, but at the time, if the market rate equals 6%, uh, then you have a standard bond, the conversion factor would be equal to 1 uh, for any bond that you deliver that is the same as this one. <clears throat> However, if the market rate of interest is higher than the 6%, the conversion factor will favor the delivery of low coupon, long bonds. If, on the other hand, the market rates are lower than 6%, it will favor the delivery of high coupon short bonds. So there are two things here. These are not identical, by the way. Um, there's no equality across here. It's green versus red. If the bond you're delivering has a higher coupon than 6%, the conversion factor will be greater than 1. If the bond you're delivering has a lower coupon than 6%, uh, the conversion factor will be less than 1. On, on a completely unrelated topic, well, not completely unrelated, but separate from this, if the rate of interest in the marketplace is greater than 6%, it will favor the delivery of lower coupon long bonds. And if market interest rates are less than 6%, it will favor the, the conversion factor will favor the delivery of high coupon short bonds. I don't find that the red stuff is that interesting. Uh, you know, it is what it is. The relationship between uh, the uh, conversion factor and the 6% standard is the more interesting point in this one.